Um, I'm going to be talking more about lake fishing here than river fishing like we were earlier today. But uh, a couple things happen this time of year. The, the fish get incredibly congregated. And um, they historically will they'll winter in the same areas every single year. So one, once you've found one of these magic areas, you can go back to them every fall, every late fall, and um, just absolutely destroy them. They get, you know, you take a lake like Mille Lacs, um, giant lake, 130 some thousand acres, and uh, you get in the spring of the year, the fish will spread out um, from one end of it to the other. I mean, there's literally a fish on every single piece of structure that time of year in the spring. Whereas in the fall, I'd say like, I don't know how to describe this, but let's say there's a, a quarter section of the lake, there might be 10, 12 big schools. Those will all condense into one or two, maybe three schools. So you're, you're talking about giant concentrations of fish in very small areas. And uh, it just leads to a, an absolute beat down. There's no other way to describe it. At that same time, when I was sitting on that hump catching them every other cast, I, I had guys going up to Mille Lacs saying they went up there for two days and never had a bite. So that just goes to show you, they're biting, but they get so condensed that you can, it, they're very hard to find. But uh, there's definitely some key things that, that I noticed about every spot that they wintered on um, that kind of uh, unveiled a pattern. Um, you do have to pay attention to your boat control on this deal because you have to keep that same amount of tension in your line. If you're moving really fast, you're not going to be able to do this. You got to hold your boat pretty still for this. And uh, a, a wrap with a jig and wrap. That if I'm if there's fish I'm marking on the graph directly under the boat suspended off the bottom, that's my number one bait. Um, you fish it a lot, like you drop it to them just like a drop shot. But uh, I do really well on this bait when these fish get five, six, seven, eight, ten feet off the bottom, which they do a lot. Um, basically, this bait has a lot of action to it that you wouldn't think of. You, you can drop, I drop it on my graph straight down and I'll watch it go all the way down say your fish is at 20 feet down below the boat. When, right when that thing gets to about 18, 19, I'll click over my bale and hold it about a foot above them. But uh, the, this bait has a little kind of fin on the back of it, which it'll actually start to glide away from you as you drop it. So when I'm dropping, I drop it below the boat, but it ends up swimming out, you know, three, four feet. And then I click over my bale. And I see a lot of guys, you know, they jerk this bait a lot, make it hop, but I've had my best success just holding my rod dead still. Because what happens, you drop that bait down, it, it glides off three, four feet, you click over your bale, and this thing will essentially start swimming circles, making tighter circles and tighter circles and tighter circles till it gets directly below you, which ta takes, you know, you know, five, six seconds or so. But uh, that, that's when I get a lot of the bites. I'll, I'll hold it above the fish. Um, I feel like most fish would rather come up than go down, suspended fish especially. Um, and you can jig it too. I've seen guys do well on that too, but I, I literally do nothing, nothing to this bait. I'll, like I said, drop it down on the graph, get it a foot above the fish, click it over, and just hold my rod dead still. It doesn't feel like it. There's no vibration. You're not feeling this bait moving, but it is swimming down there, I promise you. Like I said, it takes a few seconds to get back to that original circle. Seth, what, what ounce is that? Uh, this is, uh, I think this is 7 8 ounce. There's two sizes I use, uh, the 7 8 and the 5 8 ounce. Um, this, actually, this is the 5 8 ounce size. Those are the two I use. It, it's important to have a heavy bait there when you're, you're fishing directly below the boat. Hard, sharp breaks. Every spot they wintered on had a very hard, sharp vertical drop. You can see all along here, this super sharp break, which is very sharp for this lake. This is a really flat lake. Uh, they're very close to the basin. This is the main lake basin right here. This is the deepest water in the lake right outside all this. It even runs up in here a little bit in these guts. Um, so a sharp break next to the main lake basin. And the other thing I thought was strange about it, um, they had to have high spots on them, spots that came up to uh, eight or 10 feet of water. I don't, I don't know why, we didn't catch very many fish up there, but um, I think they use that to, they must go up there at some point in time, maybe warmer days, sunny days, calm days, get on top of that. But every place they wintered on, 
On this particular lake, had a high spot on it in eight to 10 feet of water, a very hard, sharp break in adjacent to the basin of the lake, the main lake. Yes, sir. Uh, when you're looking at water temperature for the different stages you talked about, uh, I know you kind of talk more about lakes here. Is that, you looking at a little bit colder maybe for river fish? For those, are you talking the same water temperature? No, they, they'll probably run a little bit lower uh, on river fish. I think rivers just tend to run colder all year round. Um, I'm basing all of this off natural lakes, but, uh, and, and down south, I think, you know, those, all those numbers might be skewed a little bit. They might be a little bit higher because like I said, there's a lot of places where, you know, the coldest it gets is 50 degrees or 45 degrees and lakes that don't ice up and stuff like that. Um, you know, I noticed that I, I went and fished Cherokee Lake uh, a little while ago and the water temp was 50 there in my head. That's prime time that's gangbusters best time of the year to fish but in reality that's dead of winter to those fish so that's more like fishing 40 degree water where I'm from you know and it was 50 degrees and I thought it was going to be like just on fire but it, it was definitely full winter pattern when I was there. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.